What is up you guys? In today's video, we're actually gonna be making stained glass. But if you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. I'm an artist and if you're not new, thank you for coming back. So like I said, today's video, we're actually gonna be making some stained glass and it's gonna be, I wanna keep it simple. So if somebody comes here that's new and is just looking for tips and tricks, I wanna do something that's feasible for a new artist. So we're gonna be making this tabletop crystal ball and I'm gonna show you guys from start to finish from making my design all the way through the process. Of course you don't have to add these little things like the crystals and moon and stuff but I like to because it gives it a little something extra special. So if that seems interesting, let's go. Okay, so really quick before I forget, there's a couple reasons I'm doing this. One, obviously to show you guys some more stained glass and two, to show you guys how to make your own stencils. I'm not making this video to say, hey guys, come copy all my work. I'm saying it to say, hey guys, it's really easy to make your own stencil. This is how, okay, let's go. So the very first thing I'm doing when making my stencil is marking out my page. Obviously, it would be much easier to just buy grid paper. I think that's what it's called, grid paper. It's got like the squares all over it. But I don't have any of that on me, so I'm using just a normal old piece of printer paper. And I'm going to mark out the center of my page going both ways. Okay. So what we're gonna need is a protractor because we want a perfect circle since we're making a crystal ball. Obviously you need a ruler, a pencil, a Sharpie, an eraser, and maybe a smaller ruler just in case you need it. So we've marked out our exact center. The first thing we have to do is draw our ball for our actual crystal ball. So I'm just going to find the very center of the paper and you can draw this however big or however small you want it. It all depends on what size crystal ball you want. Today I wanna to be making a pretty big one as you saw. So I'm gonna make a pretty big circle up at the top of the page here. That way we've got plenty of room when we start drawing our base. So like I said, I've just got my center point on the center line and making a nice big circle. So that's our crystal ball. Now we have to draw our base. So like I said, we're marking out halfway on the sheets because I wanna make sure my stencil is perfectly symmetrical. And the easiest way for me to do that is to draw half of my stencil first, fold it in half and trace the other side. So I have a light box. Of course, I'm gonna link everything down below. I got it super cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks on Amazon. And it's a huge light box, came with a huge charger. It's awesome. It actually came with tracing sheets too, which is really cool. So anyway, we're gonna draw our base now. You can draw this however you would like. Like I've mentioned many times before, I am the furthest thing from Bob Ross. But I just try my best. And if I don't like something, you can always erase it and try again. When I first started making stained glass, making the stencils was really, really hard for me for some reason. I just, I never liked the way it turned out, but just as I always say, practice makes perfect. So don't give up, just keep trying. And the good thing about pencil is you can erase it. So like I said, I'm drawing half of my stencil first. Whether I'm making a crystal ball or one of my bat cats or a moon phase, I want it to be perfectly even, so I'm always going to make it this way no matter what. So I'm drawing this half of the base. Now we need to make our bottom legs. Okay, so I think after erasing quite a few times, as you just saw, this is the shape that I like. 
I'm happy with how this looks and obviously while you're drawing you need to keep in mind what you're going to be able to cut out. Obviously you can't just draw a picture and use it as a stained glass stencil because you can't cut glass any way you want to. So obviously I'm making sure that these lines aren't too curved or too sharp so I know I'm definitely going to be able to cut these out. So now getting to the part where we've actually we're actually going to use these middle section lines. So now that I'm happy with half of my design, I'm going to fold it in half. So just looking right for our center line that we've already marked out and folding my sheet right on that center line. I'm just gonna grab my light box. Again, like I said, I'm gonna link this right down below. It was super, super cheap. I know it was under $20, that's for sure. And you can change the dimness on it. There's a ruler on both sides right here. It's pretty big. Yeah, it's a foot one way and a little over eight inches. So the actual part that lights up is 12 inches by eight and a quarter inches, which is pretty big. I was expecting it to be not that cheap when I had originally gone on Amazon to look. I'm just erasing the other crystal ball that I had started with on the other side. That way we don't see it through the light. Okay, so we've got half of our stencil made. Before we're gonna trace it, we're gonna outline everything in a Sharpie. That way when we fold it in half, actually on the light box, we're going to be able to really clearly see what we've drawn on the other side. Okay, so we've marked out our first half with Sharpie. Now we can fold it over on our halfway point, turn on our light, and trace the other side. Okay guys, and just like that, our stencil is already done. If you need to go back in and touch up areas like right here, obviously because we traced it, it's not meeting up perfectly, you can go back in and touch those areas up. Because once we laminate it and cut it out, the Sharpie lines will make a difference on whether or not it's even. So you have to be careful and conscious to either cut outside the line or inside the line, things like that. Now obviously something like a laminating machine would come in really good handy, but I do not have one of those. So what I do, that way you can reuse your stencil. You don't want your stencil to be just made of paper because you're gonna end up wrecking it the very first time you use it. So I'm just marking out clear base. So like I was saying, I'm gonna laminate it. I don't have a laminating machine, so all I do is just use clear packing tape and laminate the piece of paper. Okay, so we've got our stencil drawn, covered in tape, so it's gonna be reusable essentially. Now all we have to do is cut it out. All right guys, so we've got our stencil cut out, now we're ready to start cutting some glass. Okay. So, I picked out the glass that I want to use and it matches the base perfectly. So, as I've mentioned before, I have videos 
that go in depth on everything. So I'm not gonna go super, super in depth today on each step as it would make this video insanely long. What I really wanted to show you guys was how to make a stencil. So I'm just gonna kinda quickly go through this part. So first thing I'm doing is tracing all my stencils onto my glass. Okay, now we can move on to cutting. So I'm gonna get my running pliers, my glass cutter, and my cutting oil. nice and clean and ready for wrapping and soldering. But before we do that, obviously we've got to take both of these pieces to the grinder. So I've already cleaned my workspace. I've filled my grinder with new water because I made an IGT video, IGTV video making one of these earlier. So I've got my clean working space. Just gonna re-wet my sponge again. And as always, the most important thing is safety glasses when you're grinding. I also like to wear a hair cap so I don't get any glass shards up in my hair. And I'm gonna grind these two pieces or three pieces. I just gave this piece, or all the, three of these pieces, a nice clean bath and fresh water so there's no leftover dust or anything on our glass. Now we can get to foil wrapping. And like you can see here, I've got a few pieces of aura quartz crystal and a little crescent moon because like you saw in the beginning of the video, I do wanna add these onto the crystal ball as well. So as I'm wrapping this, I'm also going to wrap these, but I'll show you guys how I do that once I get there. So before I switch to silver backed foil to do the crystal ball, I'm going to wrap these. So these are just little colored aura quartz crystal pieces. So it's real quartz, but it's coated in an aura coating. So it's basically a mixture of chemicals that coat the crystal, giving it a rainbow effect. It's hard to see on the camera here, but to wrap these, all you gotta do is just simply wrap the very bottom of them. I'm gonna go around a couple times because you wanna give yourself just enough space to solder these pieces together and solder it to the crystal ball, but you don't want it to be too thick because it's gonna look ugly. So I'm just wrapping it around, moving my way up the, the quartz piece. Then once I get to the top, I'm gonna fold one edge and fold the other edge on top of it so we have no space left. Then I'm going to bring the foil down the front and peel it off. And then just like burnishing with glass, you need to burnish this too. Otherwise, it's just not gonna solder right. It's not gonna look smooth. So I'm just using my fingernail to really push down and make sure that that copper foil is securely stuck to this quartz point. And I'm gonna do the same thing with all the other pieces. So 
So we've got all our pieces wrapped. We're ready to solder. Alrighty guys, we are already so close to done. So, like I said, we're ready to solder. I just wet my soldering sponge, it's nice and damp. I've got my soldering iron on right here, it's right outside of you. But just for quick reference, I use a Hacko FX601. I can link it down below along with everything else that I usually will have in the description box. So again, guys, I'm not gonna go super in depth here as I have specific videos on it already, but I will go over what we're doing. So I've got all my pieces ready. I've got my little jar up here, which has flux in it. I've got my plastic handled brush because flux is an acid-based product, just like patina. So I'm going to dampen my brush and lightly brush over, soaking all that foil with a little bit of flux. Don't need much at all just lightly coating it. And I can go right in and start soldering. I'm gonna hit these corner points first because I wanna make sure that our piece is held together. That way when I'm soldering the rest of it, I don't have to worry about it moving around or separating. So we've got all our pieces together. It's already one giant piece. think we are done. We just have to give it one final bath and we can take a look at our final piece. Okay, everybody. Here are our finished tabletop crystal balls. It's so hard to capture. There it is. That beautiful iridescence on camera. Look at that. So cool. So like I said, you guys, the reason I wanted to make this video is because I get asked all the time about my designs and how I make my stencils. So I hope after today's video it gives you guys a better idea of how easy it is to really make your own designs. So you don't have to be taken from anybody else or buying them from a huge company. You can make your own ideas. I like to picture them in my head and then see them come to life. It's like magic. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope it was entertaining and informational. As always, I'm going to link everything I can down below. So any products I use, any videos I might've mentioned, I'm also going to link my Instagram and my Etsy. So if you like this kind of content, go check me out over there. And if not, I'll see you next time. Bye.